chapter 6. What are you worth? No one can make you feel inferior without your own consent. Eleanor Roosevelt. If I were you, I'd, I would stand for something. I would count. Benjamin E. Mays. Self-hate is a form of mental slavery that results in poverty, ignorance, and crime. Susan L. Taylor. Every day the poor African farmer used to pray that he might have a good opinion of himself. And why not, he thought. Can I ask another to think well of me when I do not think well of myself? There's a piercing African proverb. It never pays to respect a man who does not respect himself. In other words, it is senseless for you to claim to be worthy of the good opinion of others when you have a less than favorable opinion of yourself. If the world sees that you do not honor yourself, it will take you at your own value. The world will look to you for your own rating. It will stamp its value on you based on the value you give yourself, and you cannot expect to pass for more. There are two great objectives for which mankind seems to be striving. One is to attain happiness, the other is to accumulate material wealth, prosperity. You will see the role that a strong, positive self-image plays when you realize that neither of these objectives can be achieved without full application of this amazing principle. You cannot be happy unless you believe in yourself. You cannot accumulate riches, either material or spiritual, unless, you, unless your self-image is worthy of the riches you seek. Though it may be important to believe in others, it is equally as important to believe in yourself. This can be accomplished only through a positive self-image. When you bury this truth into the depths of your mind, a new, vibrant, renewed feeling of inspiration will embrace you. You will become conscious of a tremendous vitality and strength which you never knew existed. By uncovering the power of a positive self-image, you will take straight and true steps towards achievement. What are you worth? Before the atomic age, scientists estimated that a person's worth from a strictly chemical and material standpoint was approximately $32. In recent years, this estimation has undergone startling changes. Researchers now calculate that if the electronic energy of the hydrogen atoms in the human body could be utilized, a single person could supply the electrical needs of a large highly industrialized country for nearly a week. One noted theorist claims that the atoms in our bodies contain a potential energy charge of more than 11 million kilowatt hours per pound. In effect, the average person by this estimate is worth nearly 85 billion dollars. Moreover, these electrons and atoms are not just particles of matter, but waves of living energy. And as these waves ripple out, they spread themselves in patterns, reflecting and moving while remaining totally undetectable to the human eye. Furthermore, trying to mechanically reproduce the human brain would cost billions of dollars. The point that I'm trying to make is that you are much more than meets the eye. You are an immensely valuable creature. Not only are you immensely valuable as a human being, but you are unlike any human being who ever lived or ever will live. Despite your present conditions and circumstances, you are one of a kind. Now why do I share this information with you? Because you are priceless. Though the wages you receive may not reflect this inherent treasure, you are capable of much more than you might attempt or accomplish. The purpose of this lesson is to help you discover your true net worth. You are somebody. The exhortations began. I am somebody. I am somebody. I may be black, but I am somebody. I may be poor, but I am somebody. I am somebody. I'm God's child. And with this liturgy completed, another session of Jesse Jackson's Operation Push is officially adjourned. Jesse Jackson is correct. I am somebody. You are somebody. Each of us is somebody. 
but what we truly are is our perception of reality. And though you are somebody, how you feel about yourself will depend on the all important variables that this that is known as your self image. How few young men realize, wrote the black historian Charles Wesley, that their success in life depends more upon what they are than upon what they know. It is self esteem that has brought the race this far. Each of us from childhood weaves his own intricate web of self images. These stem from the beliefs born in response to every thought and experience, every humiliation and triumph, every defeat and victory. Individuals behave not in accordance with reality, but in accordance to what they perceive as reality. How we feel about ourselves affects virtually everything every aspect of our lives, from the way we function on our jobs, to the jobs we take, or even seek, to the way we operate in society, and to the goals and aspirations we set before ourselves. Our responses to events are shaped by who and what we think we are. As the 19th century inspirational writer Albert Hubbard once wrote, man is not what he thinks he is, but what he thinks. He is. The dramas of our lives are the reflections of our innermost private visions of ourselves. Thus, self-image is the all-embracing secret to success or failure. Whether we realize it or not, each of us carries within us a mental blueprint or picture of ourselves. It may be vague and ill-defined to the casual observer. In fact, it may not be consciously visible at all, but it is there complete down to the last detail. This self-image is our concept of the kind of person we are. It has been erected from beliefs about ourselves. However, most of the beliefs about ourselves have unconsciously been formed from past experiences, our successes and failures, our humiliations and triumphs, and the way others have reacted towards us, especially during our childhood. From these experiences, we mentally constructed a self or a concept of self. Once an idea or belief about ourselves is reflected in this picture, it becomes true as far as we are personally concerned. We do not question its validity, but we act upon it as if it were true. Your self-image becomes a golden key to living a better life because of two important discoveries. First. All of your actions, feelings, behaviors, even your abilities are consistent with this self-image. In short, you act like the sort of person you perceive yourself to be. You cannot act otherwise in spite of your conscious efforts. The man who perceives himself to be a failure will find some way to fail in spite of all the good intentions, even if opportunity is virtually dumped in his lap. The person who views himself to be a victim of society will invariably find circumstances to verify his opinions. The self-image is a premise, a base or foundation upon which your entire personality and behavior is built. Because of this, your experiences seem to verify and thereby strengthen your self-image, creating a positive or negative impact. For example, the schoolboy who sees himself as, sees himself as an F student or one who is not very good in mathematics will surely find that his report card bears him out. In the same manner, a young woman who is always unable to land that certain position or to earn a lucrative income will also find that her experiences tend to prove her self-image correct. Because of this overly subjective proof, it seldom occurs to people that their troubles lie in their self-image or their own evaluation of themselves. Second, the self-image can be changed. It's been proved that one is never too young, too old, or the wrong sex or race to change one's self-image and thereby begin to experience a new life. I used to think it was only I who was filled with doubts and fears, that I alone lacked confidence. In fact, while trying to overcome those very feelings of insecurity, 
I have searched deeper within myself to discover higher ground. You are much more than what meets the eye, capable and equipped to make major triumphs in your life. Yet many of us live and die without ever experiencing our true greatness. It's time to develop a new and truer version, vision of ourselves. Time to discover our individual uniqueness, our inexhaustible supply of divine wisdom and strength. Most of us never experience what is best in us because we, too, readily accept the thinking and dictates of others. We live our lives trying to be what we feel is acceptable to the masses. Once again, that old bugaboo, conformity, rears its ugly head. Often we allow the people we care about the most to convince us we should move to their rhythm. We believe their thinking is more enlightened than our own, and then we resent them for not believing in us, for pulling our strings. But more than anything, when we don't follow the stirrings in our hearts, we feel a deep sense of frustration and personal failure. That essential part of our being, the self that is you and me, needs expression. It needs to grow wings, test itself in flight in order to be. To grow in self-esteem is to grow in the conviction that you are somebody, competent as well as worthy of success. As a result, you'll face life with increased confidence and optimism. This, in turn, helps you to reach your goals while experiencing fulfillment. To grow in self-esteem is to expand your mental capacity for success, to take on bigger challenges, opportunities, and responsibilities. If you master this concept, you will appreciate the idea that each of us has a substantial stake in cultivating his or her own self-image. Protect your mind. This essential rule is crucial to the psyche of black America. It is well documented that low self-esteem is the cause of most society problems. Often we allow myths, flimsy traditions, or negative half-truths to become change that chains that shackle our lives. We unnecessarily fall prey to the opinions of others, which eventually clouds our sensory data and does little to enhance the manner in which we view ourselves. Ultimately, what shapes our self-image is not so much what happens to us as what happens in us. Garbage in, garbage out is a cliche of our times. During every moment of your life, you process and respond to millions of pieces of information fed into your mind. You will, in turn, tackle the rudiments of life with either a positive or negative outlook, depending on this data. A vital step in developing a confident, positive personality lies within your ability to transcribe this information correctly. Assume for a moment that you have in your possession a million dollars in gold. Would you protect it? Would you safeguard this treasure? Would you respect this value? Of course you would. You might even hire bodyguards or install security devices to ensure its safety. In comparison, your mind and self-image are worth far more than one million dollars. They are priceless. Your mind is the exclusive source of all you will create spiritually, financially, or materially in your life. Your level of joy, happiness, and peace of mind originates from one place, your mind. Now ask yourself, do you protect your mind as carefully as you protect your physical assets? In all honesty, the answer is probably no. Many of us permit all types of image-destroying garbage to seep into the archives of our minds and penetrate our thought processes. More than we would like to admit, many of us have allowed negative attitudes and counterproductive thinking to enter and program our mental computers. And the results are all too obvious. Broken families, drug abuse and alcoholism, teen pregnancies, soaring crime rates, and a waning of educational achievement. Learn to protect your mind. Your environment and well-meaning family and friends combine with the events of your day to strongly influence the manner in which you view yourself. 
whether you re realize it or not, each of us maintains within the spectrum of the mind a personal recorder. You must become extremely particular concerning the type of data that is fed into your mind and permitted to take root. For the sole function of the self-image is to follow the instructions given to it implicitly by the mind. Like an obedient personal computer reading its program and responding automatically. Your mental image of yourself forms the very core of your personality. To have a positive self-image is to feel confidently appropriate to life. That is, competent and worthy. To possess an average self-image is to fluctuate between feeling appropriate and inappropriate. Right and wrong as a person and to manifest these inconsistencies in your behavior. To possess a low self-image is to feel inadequate and ineffective in life. The more positive the self-image, the better equipped you are to cope with life's adversities. The more resilient you become, the more you are able to withstand outside forces. The more positive the self-image, the more creative you become in your daily approach towards life. The greater the self-image, the more ambitious you will be, not necessarily in a financial sense, although this does often happen, but in terms of what you hope to experience in life. The, greatest, the greater the self-image, the more inclined you will be to treat others with respect, kindness, and sincerity, since those you face will not be perceived as threats, inferior or superior. Succinctly put, Self-image is what you think and feel about you. There is no greater force at your service than your own mind coupled with a strong, positive self-image. See yourself as you will one day become. In Pygmalion, George Bernard Shaw's whimsical masterpiece, Henry Higgins, the proud phon phonetician, admonishes Eliza Doolittle, the unassuming flower girl, that she should see herself as she will one day become. Think like a duchess, act like a duchess, talk like a duchess, and one day you will be a duchess, he advises. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, author of Psycho-Cybernetics, developed a process for unlocking self-direction. He wrote, the lucky or successful person has learned a simple secret. Call up, capture, evoke the feeling of success. When you feel successful and self-confident, you will act successfully. Define your goal or end result. Picture it to yourself clearly and vividly. Then simply capture the feeling you would experience if the desirable goal were already accomplished. What do you think and feel about yourself? Do you like who you are? When you look in the mirror, do you see the person that you will one day become? Perhaps the following story will help you answer these questions. There was once an African prince who was born a hunchback. On his 12th birthday, his father, the king, asked him what he would like to receive as a birthday gift. Bent over and looking up, the boy replied, I would like a statue of myself. Upon hearing of his child's desire, the father was confused. He wished he had never brought up the subject. The last thing in the world he wanted for his young son was for him to be mocked. In an effort to change the boy's mind, the king asked, Certainly there must be something else that you want. But the prince replied, No, I want a statue of myself. But don't misunderstand me, father. I do not want a statue of myself as I appear now. Rather, I would like a statue of how I would look if I stood straight. Well, the poor king was distraught. He thought his son's reasoning was even worse. Furthermore, said the prince, I'd like the figure to be placed outside my window in the garden, where I could see it every day. Reluctantly, his father finally agreed to his son's wishes, and the statue was erected. Every day, in a routine, methodical fashion, the boy would stand before his statue. Day in and day out, he would stretch and reach and extend and strain to, the, to mimic the six-foot replica. He did this without fail, 
several times a day, each day, for eight years. On his 21st birthday, something happened. The prince stood with his shoulders erect, head straight, staring eyeball to eyeball with his likeness. For this once humpback, four foot tall youth was now the epitome of strength and power, with a statuesque body and an equally impressive self-image. What was the young prince's secret? Well, as the poet says, what thou seest, that thou beast. <laughs> How do you visualize yourself? What are the words, pictures, and images that cross your mind when you think of yourself? Get centered by seeing yourself as you really are, as you will one day become. Words, pictures, and images have incredible power. You must recognize this power and use it as if your life depended on it, because it does. This is the first step towards bringing about the physical equivalent of your thoughts. Loving your neighbor as yourself. The Bible speaks of the necessity of a positive self-image in the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. It is important that we love our neighbor, but the first and last words of this directive indicate a vital key to riches. Love yourself. By following the intent of this commandment, you will do the things that will ultimately allow you to perform on a level of personal excellence, providing an added measure of self-confidence. Love yourself, not in a narcissistic sense, but from a vantage point that respects and believes in your own abilities. This builds ego strength. Any man or woman who truly wants to change the circumstances of his life must first change from the inside out. He must change the innermost picture he holds of himself. You are worthy of success. He was a young black man who had grown up an orphan in Louisiana. He had lived in 14 different foster homes before he drifted to Southern California. There he resumed his education in a small public school near Los Angeles. It was obvious the boy had a deep-seated inferiority complex which his teacher tried to change through counseling him. One day in class, he blurted out, You have to remember that I'm black and that we're inferior. We're the products of slaves. That's not true, his teacher countered. You are not inferior. What do you mean, he asked. You and every black American can trace his or her genealogy to Africa, she explained. You can take pride in your genetic roots. Why? because you are the offspring of survivors. The weakest slaves, unfortunately, did not clear the middle passage. Some died aboard ship. Some threw themselves overboard and were drowned. Others died as soon as they reached these foreign shores. But those Africans who survived the tumultuous ordeal, your forefathers, had the courage, fortitude, and state of mind that would not let them die. They were emotionally superior. They would not give up hope in spite of the obstacles. Every black American is a genetic descendant of the toughest and black, the best bloodlines. And that's the kind of blood that you have, Bert. The caring teacher made her point. The boy left school that day and thought about all he had learned. Today, that young black child, Bert Duncan, is practicing physician in Los Angeles. He successfully achieved his potential, but first he had to change his self-image. Most of our battles are not fought with physical weaponry, but in the scope of mental images. If we believe subjective statements about ourselves, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm poor, for example, these images, if unchecked, will eventually take root in our lives. No one is superior or inferior to another. It is up to each of us individually to nurture our own sense of self-worth. For those with poorly defined, developed self-images marked by lack of self-confidence and dis diminished by self-worth, for those with poorly developed self-images marked by a lack of self-confidence and diminished self-worth, I point to the virtue of establishing a success consciousness overcoming mental slavery. 
To fully understand the meaning of being black in America, you must assess the impact that generations of racism, oppression, and bias have left on the collective psyches of a race of people. For more than 300 years, black America has been chained by slavery, segregated by discrimination, and systematically excluded from equal participation in the life and culture of a society at large. The most conspicuous consequence of this pattern of discrimination and exclusion and arguably the most horrendous transgression any human being could confer on another is an, is an obtrusive self-hatred. Fortunately, these problems are of our own making and without exception, the solution to these barriers lies within our power to find. Those who base their beliefs on a loving God, infinite intelligence, who acts in their behalf and who believe that they are created in his image, tend not to think less of themselves or others. Physical or emotional differences are not breeding grounds for personal shame or humiliation. Problems must be seen as opportunities for growth. There is a God-shaped vacuum within us all, and those who base their foundations on this revelation find joy, hope, and peace of mind. As you discovered in the introduction of this chapter, you are immensely valuable, as perfect as a perfect a creature as is capable of being created on this planet. No more, no less. You are the result of millions of years of evolution. The handiwork of the Creator provided the most solid foundation for building a healthy, positive self-image. Those possessing a strong self-image are able to place their own personality in complete harmony with those around them, enjoying every moment of their lives, treating people like people, regardless of race, creed, or color. Can you overcome years of mental slavery? Will you struggle to uncover and express your self-worth? Again, protect your mind. To protect yourself against negative influences, whether of your own making or as a result of the input of negative thinking people, realize that you have willpower and you can use this power to create walls of immunity against negative influences in your own mind. Successful men and women always protect their most valuable assets, their minds. The poverty-stricken never do, leaving their most cherished gift exposed to be either stolen, abused, or overtaken by destructive thoughts. Those who succeed in any calling must prepare their minds to resist the ignorance of the world. If you are reading Think and Grow Rich, a black choice to gain insight to the secrets of success, you should examine yourself first to safeguard against any negative influences. If you overlook this most basic duty, then any goal or desire you henceforth aspire to could be in jeopardy. The most common weakness of all human beings is the habit of leaving their minds open to the negative influences of others. You may control your mind by feeding it whatever thought impulses you choose. You are the master of your own earthly destiny, just as surely as you have the power to control your own thoughts. You may influence, direct, and eventually control your own circumstances, making your life what you want it to be. Or you may neglect to exercise this privilege and pay the price for failure. Right now you are somewhere on a scale between positive and negative self-esteem. Ask yourself whether it is it might be profitable or desirable to move up that scale, to move in the direction of a more accurate, valid, or honest appraisal of your real worth and significance as a person. If you can accept the possibility that you may genuinely be a worthy human being, then take deliberate action to march in the direction of an even greater self-acceptance. This is a critical time for black America. Black America needs strong men and women with equally strong self-images who are fit 
focus, and armed with a plan of action for personal and collective empowerment. Now more than ever, we need a renewed positive vision of ourselves and each other. Once we discover the best in us, we can move on to our larger purpose of uplifting the race. But first, we must focus on self, accept self, and believe in self. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the eminent black historian, expressed his respect for the power of the self-image when he wrote, when you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you make a man feel inferior, you do not have to compel him to in accept an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. If you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to the back door. He will go without being told and if there is no back door, his very nature will demand one. Remove from your mind all forms of unrealistic limitations, fears, and subjective ideas that may have led to the disintegration of your self-image. Through deliberate affirmations and conscious effort, you can strengthen your self-esteem, thereby drawing a better, more truthful image of yourself. To prove the accuracy of this statement, read and utilize the following points which will help you rebuild or strengthen your self-image. Number one, make a list of at least 10 positive attributes you possess. Be generous but honest when listing these qualities that you like about yourself. When your list is complete, Write a brief explanation of gratitude for all who have helped, family, friends, the Almighty. Number two, conversely, make a list of all the things you wish to change. Don't be ashamed. Change is normal. Place a check mark beside those traits you feel you can change. Write a personal statement of acceptance acknowledging the things that you don't like but can't change and a pledge to change all the things you can Number three, write a short personality profile describing the person you have identified yourself to be. Give full attention to both strengths and weaknesses. Number four, know that in order for you to succeed, you need only believe in yourself. Number five, understand that life is, a, is thought. Therefore, concentrate on becoming the person you intend to be. Draw a mental picture of this person so as to transform this image into its physical expression. Number six, master the principles set forth in this book. Through constant study, you will become increasingly aware of your God-given powers. Number seven, become self-reliant. Learn to stand on your own feet and express yourself in a manner that will carry conversation conviction. Cause others to become interested in you because you will first become interested in others. Eliminate selfishness and develop a spirit of service in its place. Number eight, never downgrade yourself or your importance in life, nor allow others to berate you. If you are forced to listen to such nonsense, then miss it immediately. Remember the quality of your thoughts your feelings and attitudes produce results. Number nine, repeat positive affirmations to yourself with conviction. To be enthusiastic, act enthusiastic, or do it now. Think of this list as a blueprint or detailed description of the person you want to be. By utilizing the list in this manner, you should not doubt for one moment the plans for your new self-image and you'll see you'll one day resemble review this list as much as possible and remember your thoughts produce corresponding results within your life 